Let's turn to our other top stories. NBC5 investigates Chicago's migrant crisis. By the end of next week, thousands of asylum seekers will be forced to leave the city's shelters under the new 60-day limit policy. Investigative reporter Bennett Haberly is here with the challenges ahead for these migrants, but also, Bennett, for city leaders. Oh, that's right, Stefan. It will mean increased pressure on the city, faith organizations, and migrants themselves to find a place to stay. We asked Mayor Brandon Johnson about that deadline this week. His answers came only after we pressed him several times. To Mayor Brandon Johnson. Mayor Brandon Johnson on stage this week. Every single young person, I want you to apply today. To promote a summer jobs program, initially sidestepped questions about if the city would once again postpone the impending deadline for migrants to leave the shelters. The city has twice or three times pushed the deadline back. Are you prepared to do that again? We're compassionate people. I mean, I'm, I got you. I'm just no, trying to get the answer now. Oh, don't ask, don't say that to him. <laughs> no, it's okay, but is it okay if I say that we are compassionate people, though? Do I have your permission to say that? Mayor, it does. It just doesn't okay, answer the okay. question. Okay, okay. But I, so it's not okay that I let people know that Chicago is compassionate? And let me just say it, though, okay? Thank you. We are compassionate people, and so we're doing everything in our power to demonstrate compassion. Now, as far as whether or not um, we will extend deadlines, we haven't gotten to that point. Right. The mayor's spokesman later confirmed that the first wave of migrants will be asked to leave starting on March 16th. Those reaching their 60-day limit will have the opportunity to re-enter the shelter system. But Johnson told reporters the city's main goal is to resettle as many people as possible. Are you guys seeing the sort of the demand for this ramp up? As we, as we approach this deadline? Yeah, absolutely. Charlotte Long works with the Sanctuary Working Group, a grassroots organization helping a small number of migrant families find housing, and with the help of grant funding, is paying their rent. The resources are finite. Charlotte says finding landlords willing to take on migrants who are eager to work but have no steady income is challenging. Do you worry that people will end up on the street? Absolutely, absolutely. You already see the amount of migrants I see selling candy has tripled in the last few months, children selling candy, um, because literally the family doesn't have any other option. <laughs> this family we met outside Union Station told NBC5 Investigates they were flown here from Texas months ago. They don't have work permits and are currently renting a room for $600 a month. I see their faces when I'm sleeping. I think about their names all the time. Um, if I'm driving around the neighborhood and I see a for rent sign, like I, I call it immediately because I can't stop thinking about housing and shelter. I can't stop thinking about where are they gonna stay. According to the city, as of late January, roughly a thousand migrants had obtained work permits. Of the 14,000 that were in shelter at the peak of winter, only 7,500 were eligible for state-funded rental assistance. Charlotte's worry is that as the migrant population decreases in city shelters, another one could increase, the number of Chicago's homeless. And we asked the city three times for updated figures on how many people could be impacted. They tell us those numbers still being tabulated. The state of Illinois, by the way, has spent $45 million helping at least 5,000 families resettle and another $1 million on what it calls out-migration, paying for plane, train, and bus tickets for migrants who end up not staying in Illinois. Stefan? And you think about these people, the uncertainty, trying to figure out what they're going to do. It is a lot. Yes. It. All right. Thank you so much. We appreciate your reporting.